Agatha of Beora Worlds. Firstly, an apology. I haven't been around this last little while because I'm pleased to say that uh, life has got in the way. Work especially has got in the way. I've been really busy from a professional point of view and what I do. If you don't know what I do, go and check out my Facebook page, at Time Capsule Ed. Or my website, timecapsule.education. Or my Twitter, at Time Capsule Ed. If you're not interested, then fine. I do make loads of models for that as well, of course. I uh, will be making some models for work on this channel. But I've been quite busy in and out of schools and working in the heritage industry in the last little while, so I haven't been out to make much in the way of videos. That's why this next bit is going to jump around a bit, because in a second, I'm going to do the introduction for this video. But I filmed it ages ago. So many apologies. Check this out. Now. Hello and welcome to Magathea Builder Worlds. This is a Necromunda build. A sump C build, in fact. <clears throat> if you've been watching these in order, uh, then last time on an Ekramunda build, you would have seen me finish build from start to finish. Convert this Playmobil toy into a sump C fishing vessel. Um, I'm pretty pleased with it. The grim dark and the grime and the goo and the... Uh, I haven't made a crew for it yet, mind you. They're coming along. Um, but in the meantime, I thought I would make a piece of scenery to go with it. I'm still working on the Red Wall Abbey, painting away. There's a bit of it that's not painted. There are other bits now that are in the kind of process of being painted. So while that's going on, I want to get some more Necromunda scenery made. And I'm going to make the island and the hovel, or the home, of the fisher scum who operate this fishing vessel. My Necromunda boards, uh, if they're not Zomor Tileless boards, are made on plywood. Usually 12 inch squares like this one cut at B&Q, uh, hopefully to be A square and be the right size. I use plywood because I hope it's not going to warp. It'll keep its shape. It's all right in squares, but some of the rectangles, even little rectangles, two foot by one foot, there's still a definite warp to it. It's not much, but it's still definitely there. I'm really, really annoyed because I store this stuff flat. I store this stuff with heavy stuff on top of it, and it still stays warped. My plan is to do the water surface fairly early on in this model, uh, like I've done before with tissue paper and Mod Podge, and hopefully when the glue dries, it will contract a little and it will pull the ends up a bit and hopefully that will get rid of the warp. It's not a huge warp, and to be quite honest, I could probably live with it as it is, but I like my table to be as flat as possible, so I will I will we'll do that and we'll have a go. But first of all, we're gonna play around with and think about what this hovel is gonna look like. So I'm gonna need sharpies, I'm gonna need some plastic stuff, and uh, we're gonna need to have a go. Dry fitting, messing around, seeing what we can come up with. Come over here, check this out. Oh, nothing to check out in a minute, it's a big piece of plywood, but come over here anyway, we'll check it out. It'll be cool, I promise. Ship. Good. Okay, so here we go. This is um the board and this is the fishing fishing vessel. I still haven't given it a name, I really ought to. What I'd like to do is to fill up quite a bit of this with kind of hovel but i want it to be on an island on on some kind of like waste concrete waste or something rising up out of the sump and then to have some kind of like metal plates and bits and pieces on it ideally um i think i'd have a kind of I'll draw this with a sharpie uh island kind of doing this kind of thing over here maybe and this is a rough i'm totally making this up as i go along um so islandy islandy bit plenty of room for some water kind of thing islandy island with a kind of key here so house maybe kind of along here and then a key kind of running along there for the the trawler the fishing vessel to kind of huddle up against and then a pathway down that side like that um uh, that kind of thing. That would be quite. That would be quite cool. So kind of hovel there, and a bit of a key side, or hovel over here, and a bit of a key side, and that kind of thing. Now, uh, I'm going to use probably either 25 millimeter XPS foam, 
Although this stuff is pretty expensive, so I might see if I can find some low density polystyrene because it's just going to go underneath and support uh, other bits and models. So that's this, this is an expensive solution to do when I could probably use something cheaper. I could probably use polystyrene, you know, packing polystyrene or um, something like that. I'll have to go and see what I've got kicking around. So I could use, I, I keep all my polystyrene trimmings, all the stuff that I've trimmed off other models. So I end up with this kind of stuff. And I always think, oh, I'll do something with that, I'll do something with that. That'll be useful, don't throw it away. But the problem is, is a lot of the time, I haven't done anything with it. But now is the perfect time to, I'm never gonna use this kind of thing, but actually, I can get some of this out. And just chuck it down here. Look at that, see? I knew chucking, not chucking this stuff away would help doesn't really matter what it looks like because it's not going to get seen um, or it'll only get seen a tiny bit supporting everything else. Go look, I didn't have to go and root around anywhere, I've got loads of this cack. Polystyrene cack, digging through the polystyrene cack. There are loads, look now. Right, that will even help me do different levels I suppose. Cool. Hey, this build is coming on already and I'm done with it. Wicked. There you go, failed chimney, that one. Right, I think that's probably enough cack. Uh, and uh, that'd be cool. So, right, let's play around with that and see if we can cut up and make an underside of an island. Wow, progress already. Note big gaping wound from standing knife blade the other day at work making a steampunk room. Um, yeah, so uh, being extra careful with Stanley knives tonight. Kind of. Okay, digging around then in my bits boxes, I've managed to find a whole bunch of different size bits of styrene, which is pretty cool. Uh, that means I'm going to be able to have different height levels um, and, and different things easy, and, and it's just using junk, which I'm kind of like getting into, really. I like that. In fact, I've just found some 10 mil stuff that I might put down here and have another level altogether. So, next job then is going to be to stick all this down and then start figuring out how to put metal plates and bits and pieces on top of it, which is probably going to need the, me cutting up zone more tireless tiles. Now, I know some people are going to go, oh my god, he's cutting up zone more tireless tiles and we can't even get them. Ha ha ha, I have a surfeit. But they're really cool. Um, I could, I suppose, go on Thingiverse and find zone more tireless um files or similar so files to zone more tiles to 3d print them but sorry i've got a box of these so i'm going to chop this up and have it on different levels it's not going to be much more than a foot i'm going to use most of the zone more tireless tile i think on this model i just want some concrete and bits and pieces exposed as well though so uh glue next okay for the purpose i'm using gorilla wood glue uh it's you'll also notice it's the australian version because it's upside down or more the point I'm holding out that way to get glue to run down because this bottle's nearly run out. Uh, I don't know where the other bottle is, so I hope we've got enough. Here we go. Let's try, try this anyway. So yeah, I'm using uh, Gorilla wood glue. I'm using quite a lot, as you can see. Um, all over the area that I want to glue. I'm going to glue it, loads of glue on. And then we're going to spread it out using an old bit of foam and then I'm going to let it go off a little bit before I stick any styrene in place. Then I will weigh down the styrene and let it dry overnight. Let's close that up. Right, there we go. I could add glue to the um, styrene as well. Let it go off too, that will help from a contact point of view. But there's so much glue going on here, it's not going to matter too much. Well, I'm going to spread it out. Any glue that doesn't actually get polystyrene stuck to it in the end will be absolutely fine because it's going to help make the texture of the water. So that's cool. Oh, look, there we go. Glue spread in my official glue spreader. 
Now actually, I should have used one of my uh, fantasy burrows and badger spread, glue spreaders, but they are not to hand, so. Glue spread out, nice. Now, I'm not gonna make you watch the next bit because it will be as interesting as watching glue dry. You see what I did there? Yeah, okay. Come back in a bit, I will have stuck all this on. Right, so that is everything. As you can see, glue still drying there. But that's the start, I've made a start. This needs now to dry. And that's probably gonna take you know, at least overnight. Uh, possibly 24 hours or so. So from that point of view, that's quite cool. But I've got a number of different levels here, which is going to be nice. I'm going to put metal walkways and things over that in places and rusty bits and stuff. And uh, we're making a start of our sump hovel. Our first sump hovel. Nice. Well done, me. Job done. Mission accomplished. Well, hardly mission accomplished, but you know what I mean. Right, so this is where we are with my styrene stuck on a base. Now what I have to do is um, start thinking about how I'm going to put different surfaces on here. I want to use some bits of uh, Zone Mortalis tile. Conveniently, they're already in square, so they shouldn't take an awful lot of effort cutting up too much. Um, and I'm going to be able to lay those on in different places. And then I'm also going to use... Uh, floor and bits and pieces from uh, different other different Necromunda kits. So right now it is time to go digging through the cack. Ack. Ack, ack, ack. Cack. Okay straight away then I'm going for the big cack box, the kits that I haven't used, that kind of thing. Um, because Walkway pieces like this are going to be really useful. Um, other zone mortalis <coughs> sprues. Let's see if I can find something else which might be quite good. Um, I want to avoid using a container to build the hovel if I can because I've done a lot of that already. Come on, I've got to have some other zone mortalis stuff around here. No? Oh well, that was pretty quick. I've taken that off the sprue already. Um, I might use, here we go, might use some barricaded stuff. Of course, there is the odd kind of swampy technical, which would be quite interesting coming out of the water, but these are always quite good for building bits of hovel um, or even using as, as broken walkway and things. So I'm going to use some of those too, I think. Um, but I might have to go and look into bits that have already been taken off sprues. Could use bits of container to make a home, make the hovel, but I've done that before. Um, I am going to use um, a fair amount of sprue, mind you. Just straight lengths of sprue to act as piers and supports for some of this, so I'm going to need to keep the sprue kicking around. Not much else in there, though. Uh, this is kind of admet stuff. Oh, and <coughs> sprues like I used uh, to uh, make the extra bit on the ship, so that might be quite useful. Oh, here we got some floor pieces. Um, <coughs> this could be quite cool. I mean, they're, they are very adept as mechanicus, mind you, but. So that kind of thing's not bad, but then well, that's not a lot of different to the Zone Mortalis stuff. So I reckon to be quite honest, my best bet is to start, <coughs> start cutting up a Zone Mortalis piece, tile, and um, see what I can do with that and then see what I can work, what I need to find afterwards. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do actually. I'm going to cut and start on a Zone Mortalis tile and see what I need to do. Didn't need to do much digging through the cack right now, but don't worry, we'll go back to digging through the cack later because we will definitely need to dig through the cack when we are looking for details. So, <clears throat> let's get rid of that lot. Start on a zone more tireless tile. 
Okay, so this is going to be a case of pick a few. Um, roughly just kind of dry fitting. This is this bit here is, is kind of too wide. I reckon if I cut chunks of two so more tireless tiles, that might work to start off with. Let's see how I go. If I cut out down the straight down the middle, straight through these fours. I don't know, I've never done this before, so let's see what happens. Let us cut up a zone more tile. Let's take, get that out of the way. Take knife. Take zone more tile this tile. Explore different lines to cut. Um yeah. Go. Make sure you don't stick knife into thumb anymore. Could do with a new blade on there. That's a bit rubbish. Right, so. <coughs> right, there's the board. First bit I've cut off is this kind of L shape. A zone more tireless tile. Which I thought would go on there, but that's sticking out too much over that side. Um, so I'm thinking what I'm going to do is actually going to cut this top strip off. So that'll have, that'll have quite a large bit down here on the key side and a little bit going along there and then the rest will be concrete and stuff. Um, and then I'll have to find a way of doing this bit along here. Not a bad start though. Let's cut this bit off. See where we are after we've done that. Take the knife. Take the plastic. Cut them up. Jolly good. Wish me luck. Tally ho. Which is a good thing about zone more tireless stuff, it's not very really thick plastic, it's not going to take very long to cut through it. And I reckon after I cut through a few times, I'll probably be able to just break it. Yeah, there we go. That's quite cool. Okay, that's a start. This then, not really wide enough, about too wide there. Yeah, it could do. Maybe you find some other cack to go along there. Could possibly go like that. What do you think? Not bad, is it? Then find some other bits to go around the edges. Sounds like a plan to me, Timmy. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so we're um, sticking on a few bits now of Zone Mortalis base. Um, just to see what's what. Of course, it's a pain in the neck, this stuff, because it's got all this supporting material underneath, which is preventing me just sticking it straight down to the polystyrene. So I'm going to have to trim all of this off so it can stick to the polystyrene. But um, I've used a few bits. Uh, I'm going to let that dry and then going to mess around with some other stuff to see what else I could do. I might chop out some of the polystyrene in places. Uh, other places are going to get covered in sand and be turned into concrete. And under here, I'm going to use supports made of sprue to kind of support the edge of that. But um, you're going to wait until it's all completely stuck. Even now, that's not working because I've left this rim on this ridge on here. I'm going to have to cut that off because I can't have it still sticking on. Otherwise, how very annoying! Clippers. I'm only taking a moment now. It can be pretty rough because well, that's the underhive. It's the sump and everything's falling apart. Bits of plastic are pinging around the workshop. It's lucky my wife is not in here tonight to sit at her desk. Otherwise, we'll have had her eye out by now. Okay, here we go. So that's got that clipped off. Quick go at it with my stand with a knife just to trim away. Both sides there, that's going to give a better contact. More surface to stick. Okay. Leave that stick. I'm going to put some heavy weights on that. I'm going to get with something else. Right then, so now it's a case of I've got my main island kind of worked out. Uh, this piece of base is sticking here. I haven't put any 
walkway on the concrete over there. We're now going to work out kind of a hovel, the actual place that uh, my my fisher scum live in. The iron bit's going to be fine. I'm being able to bring alongside my sump fishing vessel will be absolutely fine. That'll work really nicely in there. But um, definitely need some kind of hovel on here. Now I'm struggling with that at the moment. Um, I was going to use riser runes, but there's not enough floor plan up here. I want it to be a bit more ramshackle than that. So at the minute I'm playing around with various barricades, which I'll cut the backs off if we're going to use those and make them stand upright, and then it needs some kind of roof. As soon as I've decided roughly what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the sump water in using my tissue paper method, and then I'm going to put sprue girders sticking up supporting this back end of this uh, metal floor. I might use some sprue bits like this. They might be able to support it roughly, holding it up. So it's coming out of the water. That might be quite interesting because I'll have that kind of like area through there. Ooh, probably big enough to sneak a figure through it. But um, yeah, so I've got to play around. I, I had thought of maybe using fortress pieces like this. I had thought of using fortress pieces, but again, they're just too damn big. Um, I want this to be a precarious little place, so I might have the um, floorways off. But these walls are just too chunky. There's no way there will be a big chunky building built out here. Um, it needs to have a reason for having been there in the first place, which I also can't think of. Obviously, this is a perfect time to go... Digging through the cack. Digging through the cack. Let's go digging through the cack. Digging through the cack. All right, so after my first round of cack digging, because I might change my mind, I've decided that this island, little island, was some kind of pumping station, which means I need to dig out various spare bits of Promethean pipe and the like. Um, at the moment I'm just messing around really. This is the engine block left over from uh, my sump enforcer's precinct that got taken off the uh, roll on roll off ferry and I was kind of like sticking that just lying up the side. I'm dry fitting at the moment. Um, bits of Promethean pump, some old 25mm square bases, lift that out of the water. That's quite cool so that can kind of pump down there. Um, I need some other pumpy bits, and then that's going to give me space to put some kind of shack dwelling on the top, I think. Still need to support bits and pieces, but that way I can have um, some pump running, some pipe even running in the water. That will really help to kind of sell the whole thing as a uh, an installation island with, with cack on it. Um, so I uh, can't decide now, well, I'm going to fiddle around, this is tonight, I'm not going out to go and look in the outside cack boxes for the moment. Um, so I'm going to play around with this a bit more, see how, what I come up with. I've, I'm cutting up some of these handy sprues that are, um, got this cool kind of like shape on it, lots of sprue on that, which means I can... I like that as floor pieces over the old concrete. So that might work. I'll put that on. I'll, I'll sand up the concrete block. And that can all be irregular. Then I'm going to have these metal plates. Metal bits on the top like that. And then I'll put, probably put metal mesh on there as well. Stop guys falling through it. The one there. And I might have one right next to it. That'd be quite cool because you'll be able to see through all to the sump water below. So, although I won't do that sump water with tissue paper in there, I'll do that with filler because it's just too fiddly to get the tissue paper in. But that will probably do that like that. And I'll have a whole bunch. You'll be able to see through that. That'd be quite cool. Let's come down here and have a look at that.
I quite like the look of this because I'll, I'll sand all that so that will all be concrete. I'm going to have pipes and things running through there and then this bit here might not even put a white mesh on that. Um, can't see you big critters all look around. <gasps> Crisis. Um, but here you'll be able to see through underneath that. But they'll have enough on there to make a platform. Got a third bit. That might work there. Look at that. That's quite neat. I like that. That'll help with the Oh look, I don't even know what this is off. This is out of the cack box. I think that came from my mate Edward. Some kind of metal grill around. That ought to go over the end of the pipes or something to stop the big cack going up or down the pipes. I've got another bit of pipe here that. So yeah, I think I quite like this as a plan at the moment. Uh, the old cack, the old pumping plant, which no longer works. You know, because it's on the sump, it's broken down. That gives me an excuse to have kind of like walls with, with kind of control plates and bits and pieces on. That could sit on there. I could take these handles off either side and have that stuck on there. That's quite cool. I quite like that. And now I'll build my, my hovel on the top using... If I can't find anything else, I'll, I'll use barricades. Um, cut the backs off, stand them up proper make some walls and things um, still like to get something with a little bit more height on it mind you so. still need to be looking but it's coming on I, it's kind of like building up oh. it's kind of building up as a concept now so uh, but I need to find something to, to lend, lend itself to the, the hovel itself so it's not just made with these barricades well that is pretty cool um, and I could have some metal glue on top yeah keep thinking keep thinking maybe a couple of these these are quite cool see I quite like these but I'm not a big fan of them being huge high walkways but if I cut it down um, yeah if I cut that off there that would give me an interesting kind of light bit I could possibly have a some roof bits oh no you might get the impression I'm kind of making this up as I go along and do you know what you wouldn't be wrong my friends you wouldn't be wrong I am making this up as I'm going along but uh yeah, I don't have to use that for a roof, mind you. Or saying that, I could just cut that off there and cutting these down might be quite neat. That'll give me a decent height, anyway. I suppose. It's a road dog. Yeah, I mean it's a hovel. It doesn't have to be very high. Who knows? Quite cool. Um, I have no idea what this is. Uh, this must have been given to me by my friend Edward, I think. Um, it's obviously a bit of a toy, like a micro machine toy or something. I like this rampy bit here. Uh, and now I'm thinking of having that fitted on the end. Um, so, what I might have to do, it's quite cool because I'm now starting to get more non necromunda elements onto this model i think i'm going to cut across this these two bits here and slice out that bit of polystyrene and then this then will kind of sit that far up will fit just about on the board i'll get rid of those little stairs in there or fill something in with that but i like all these this kind of like texture on the top here that obviously i will stick together or take off or take out or whatever and then that way there, that will lead up and be still part of the kind of like the original replacement island thing. And then I'll only have a hovel on this top part. I think that might be quite interesting. I'm going to do that. Oh, I'm going to cut this bit off anyway. Because I don't like it overhanging too much. It's hard to get rid of that. Yeah. Let's cut that off. Let's see what happens. I could regret doing this, but hey-ho.
That's cool. Look, that fits on quite nicely. Uh, just for some reason, uh, I thought that was going to line up with that. It doesn't, but that's quite neat. I like that. That goes on the end there, and there's. I'll stick down the door features and things like that. Fill this bit up here, and then I'll have some. We're going to put that back over there, remember, and that's going to have pipes and stuff go to it. Um, some kind of control panel there. Nice. We're going to then have barricade walls going around this corner here, I think. All oh, right, all right, this is starting to take shape. Okay, first of all, I'm not going to make any apologies for any background noise in this tonight. Because it's the middle of June, it's been blimmin' hot today, and frankly all the doors and windows are open. So if there's background noise, I apologise. Get over it. Um, this is a quick middle of June update on this model. You can see how far I got with sticking bits together. It was looking quite good, quite promising. The only problem is now, as you can see, sitting flat on a table, Look at the warp in that piece of board. I do I get asked about warping boards at times. Um, and uh, this board hadn't warped that much. This extra heat recently being stuck in my workshop has made it bearing even more than it currently was. Um, my normal procedure to try and outbend a board uh, would be to... I was thought I was going to cover it uh, with uh, tissue paper and... Mod Podge, PVA glue, and as that dries, that contracts and that helps to pull the ball back into shape. But the warp on this board is now mahoosive, um, which I'm a bit fed up about. So uh, I've got a flatter board here, still a bit of bend in it, which is really annoying because it's kind of like 8 mil plywood and you hope it's not going to bend too much when it's that size, but it has. Uh, but I reckon that is saveable by putting the, uh, the water on it. So I'm going to actually strip everything off this board, bin this piece of board, or try and flatten it out one way or another, uh, but not use it, because it's going to just suck from the get-go. So <laughs> I'm going to sit here and um, I'm going to take this off. I'm going to get under it with a craft knife for some description. I'm going to cut away all of this, stick it down onto this board underneath, and uh, pretty much start that bit again. Then I'm going to sand all the uh, polystyrene, because it's supposed to be concrete. Um, put in the piers as quick as I can and get the uh, tissue paper sump water on. Um, hopefully that will um, get it to walk back and I'll be able to crack on with the model. It's a bit of a bummer really. Magrafia sad face. <laughs> so here's the solution. Whacking great big craft blade. I'm going to cut through underneath the polystyrene, cut through all the glue and try and cut all these individual pieces off so I can stick them on the new board. How bloody annoying is that? I hope you enjoyed the videos about Rebel Abbey, of course, because they're now done. Um, and I'm back to some Necromunda. Uh, oh, that's not at all squeaky, is it? Oh, you don't need to watch me cutting this and making loads of squeaky noises. Come back when it's finished. Well, that took a little while longer than I thought it was going to. <laughs> Testament to how good Gorilla Wood Glue is. That took quite some prizing off. All right, now to reapply it all to this new board. Uh, might do some rethinking about layout while I'm at it. All right, accompanied by the noise of a wood pigeon, we are back in the game. I've changed the layout a little bit. Several layers of metal bits and... Uh, <laughs> But there's still enough room to bring my fishing boat along either side here, which is quite cool. Um, these are now sticking down, so when it's completely dry, I'm going to sand all the cement bits. And now I'm just fiddling, doing a dry fit. Okay, so this is a new addition. This is me starting to kind of put together some accommodation on this little island. I thought it might be some kind of pumping station or the like, but um, uh, now it's a fisherman's dwelling. So uh, I'm going to put these two bits of walkway and roof on the top. So control panel up here because I want to be able to ask some kit to unload fishing, wherever they're fishing out of something, off the vehicles maybe. 
cutting out the old barricade section which I'm going to glue into the wall on this side here maybe one of these scavenged sections off the uh, Imperial landing pad I might stick that in there too like that so that then becomes a kind of impromptu wall on that end and then I'm going to hang fabrics and things on it as well I think might be quite cool uh, over this way I think with some kind of tent arrangement or I'm going to keep rooting around in the different bits boxes. It's so long since I did the first bits of video on this, I can't remember if I've already gone digging through the cack in this video. If I haven't, now's a good time to go digging through the cack. Oh, I've so missed it. Here we go, digging through the cack. I need to find a cack box or two. Excellent, excellent. The only problem with digging through the cack when I have a little like this is I've obviously no idea what I want. I really am just searching through boxes of plastic component trying to find stuff that would look good on this model uh, however this is not a very useful one because this is mostly zone more tiles walls and corners and pillars and things we need to go on proper zone more tiles tiles so not much that would work I don't think hmm Find another box. Don't go away. From of course, all these models they have to make sense as far as I'm concerned. So can't just have old junk. That's an amp box. Need that. Mm. I mean, that my little ammo crates like that. That's pretty cool. Ammo crates like that, that's always going to be helpful. Mm. Water in the underhive, I think, will be really, really important for everybody who lives there. I don't know what that is. I've no idea what that is. Uh, but it looks quite cool. Actually, I'm going to use that on the quayside for tying ropes up to. Look at that, that's nice. Ballardy malarkey, that's going to go on the end. A bit of junk, proper junk. Um. Um, Necrom, uh, Gorka Morka, Grot Rigger, nice. Big mushroom. Engine block from a old wall wagon circa 1988. Bits of a first ver first edition Rhino with added tracks. So I think I'm going to make a conveyor belt for the fish fish products coming off the trawlers. Uh, I'm going to use these uh, crates. And I'm going to use a lift, two lifts, and I'm gonna kind of like hang that along there, and I'm gonna have that along there like that, and I'm gonna put that one on that in there like that, and then I need to set controls, but effectively they'll unload the fish type malarkey onto the conveyor belt, and the conveyor belt will move the fish type malarkey up to a processing area. I think that'd be quite cool. I mean, I don't know anything about fish and fish processing. I'm making this up as I go along. Seems to make sense. Boat arrives here, cranes over the big fish thing, slaps them on there. They trundle along here, slap down onto the um, the floor over here where they get chopped up. That makes sense. I think that makes sense. That does make sense, doesn't it? Good. Right, okay. That's what we're going to do. Cool. Check this out. Where are we at? Well, I've got now I've got lots of ideas for detailing. I've dug through the cack, and down there is a pile of cack and things I'm going to do, including my conveyor belt, which I'm quite pleased with working on that. But actually, I've decided that before I can really do detailing and cack, I need to concrete polystyrene. So, the last job 
I think of this video is going to be to wield the Mod Podge and the Coral Sand. And cover all the polystyrene in sand so it can become concrete. And then I can stick things on top of the concrete. That's my plan. That's what we're going to do now. Check this out. So we need, along with the coal sand and the mod podge, which we've just seen, we need the sanding tray. Here's the sanding tray. Oh, knackered blue IKEA tray. Right, mod podge. Polystyrene on the model. Apply. Mod Podge to polystyrene, go. This does not require finessing, this just needs gluing. Quite a lot of it. All over there, it's going to seal the polystyrene, it's going to get the concrete in there. And I'm not worrying too much if I go down on the board and get sand on that because that will get covered up when I, um, uh, when I, I put the water on, which will be in the next episode. So, there we go. Around the corner. And then because of the extreme temperatures we're getting in a minute, because we're jolly warm, I'm actually going to leave something weighing down the middle of the model to stop it kind of like warping. Cause obviously, that's what set me back a little uh, with this build today. So here we go. And where the polystyrene has risen up um, off the board, or it doesn't go to sit down on the board nicely, I'm just going to fill that with water. Water, water, how Essex was that? I will fill it with water next time. Or I'll get some filler. I might even get some filler. Fill it so it does go down to the water. There we are. Now, it's just not looking like much at the moment. Although, I think I can see an awful lot of potential with this. Um, the sand is done, so that's fine. And the one the next jobs, I'm going to add some girders and some bits and pieces to support the um, walkways coming out of the water. And then I'll be able to put water on it, um, which will be the tissue paper and Mod Podge method. Then I'll be able to detail the whole model, um, put all the extra bits and pieces on. We could build more of a shelter here. Um, I'd like some tarpaulins and bits and pieces hanging down, and made, and like an A-frame made of girders and that kind of thing. Um, and some fishing, some fishing ephemera in places. That will, will be next time. So this is going to be a two-part video. Next time, water, detailing, painting. Actually, I'm quite pleased with this, considering it was a bit of a disaster when I checked it out earlier and realised how badly the board was warped. We're coming on nicely. Here is my sump fishing boat, and that's going to sit. That will fit in there nicely like that. It's all right. Or around the other side, even. Either way around. That's going to look pretty cool. Me, as a Necromunda figure. Thanks, Hero Forge. That's quite cool. I like that. Um... Right, so that is the first part of the first Sump Sea Island. The Sump Fisherman's Island dwelling fish processing. Well, I'll use the term fish because they're not really fish, but you know. Whatever they're fished for, processing kind of plant island thing. It's a really catchy name. I'm going to have to think of something better for that. Um, actually, now I have made quite good progress. To see how it turns out then, you're going to have to tune in again at Magrathea Builder of Worlds uh, to see the second part of this build. There, I'm planning on there only being two parts. Unlike some of the other things which are going in like four, five or six, two parts, that will be the next part of the video. So, uh, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, if you've only just discovered this channel, then make sure you hit subscribe. Um, if you are a long time viewer and you're pleased that I'm back, Leave a comment down below if you like what I'm doing, if you've got any ideas, things that you reckon I could use, then please give me a shout because I might be able to include them in the details uh, in the second part of this build. So, thanks very much for watching. I will see you next time down on the Sump Sea under Hive Primus on Necromunda. Thanks for watching. 
I'll see you next time on Magrathia Building Worlds.